Hey guys, this is Agent Luke, and this is a video on retrofitting a speeder. So my goal for this video is to show you guys how I can take an existing grid. Okay, this is the Spiff. Uh, it's one of my first little speeders I ever built, um, and it's pretty capable. So we take off. It's got uh, you know a simple thruster system. It's got a few signal lights, um, and it's also got a landing gear uh, system that can be retracted. Uh, with this key number eight. So we see the gear comes out there. Now, a nuance here is we want those those magnetic plates to be able to auto lock when they come down, right? I don't really want to lock them. I think when I come in for landing and I, my legs hit the ground, I just want it to lock. So for now, we have to hit it. Oops, that's on the connector. We'll move them forward. When it comes down, we'll see that they go ready to lock, but they don't lock themselves. So there we go, a lock, and we'll do an unlock. So I want to adjust all of this so that mother handles all of this automation. So what I'm going to do first is just sit this guy on the connector. We've got two hours of battery, so we're in pretty good shape there. Let's take a quick look at what our automations currently look like. So uh, we're going to undock real quickly so we have only our terminal. And it's just two timer blocks. So notice that we have a docking ship timer and an undock ship timer. So in the dock timer, we can see that we are turning our thrusters off turning our lights off and putting our batteries on to recharge. Uh, okay. Similarly, on our undock ship, you'd, you'd imagine the inverse. So we're going to turn our batteries to auto, we would turn our thrusters on, and we would turn our lights on. Now, we're going to do batteries in a different way because, in fact, there is a, there is a, a, a bug, I'll call it, um, that happens when your grid disconnects uh, and loses power for an instant. The programmable block doesn't like this. Uh, for some reason, the event controller is able to get around this, but a, a programmable block without power doesn't work, and that will throw an error with mother. Um, so let's just ensure that she always has power. Cool. So let's start with the dirty work. I'm going to get rid of my two event blocks. So there is one in there. We're going to get rid of him. And there is one in here. And in fact, I think I'm missing one. Okay, so we're all cleaned up. So let's talk about the docking procedure first. So the, like I mentioned, the first thing we want to probably do is make sure our batteries are always on. So let's do that in our cockpit, right? So we're going to we use our auto LCDs there. We'll just do the three lines as recommended. And so we can put all of our traditional uh, configuration above that three the three uh, dash, right? So this is hooks for the cockpit and we're gonna use the on occupied hook, right? And all we're gonna say is that we want to turn our batteries to auto when we occupy our cockpit. That's just a guarantee that we always have power uh, in the instance that someone sits in the cockpit, and that gets around any issues with the connector. So we'll do that first. Um, we will refresh mother, and we probably will not see, we'll do a quick reboot of the newest version. And we're not going to see any major changes yet, but in fact, the cockpit does now turn our batteries on by default, which is a good thing. But most of the work that's going to need to happen is via our connector, right? So let's look at our connector now. And I'm going to undock for this so that we only have the one to work with. And we're going to go to custom data and our connector itself will have hooks. Okay, so we know these ones, on lock and on unlock. Okay. Um, and in this case, we probably want to keep it simple, right? Ultimately, when we're unlocking our connector, we want to undock. And when we're locking our or rather, when we're locking our connector, we want to dock. And when we're unlocking, we want to undock. Okay, so we're going to call those commands, but we're going to define those inside of our programmable block custom data, and we're just going to call them from the connector. It centralizes our logic a bit better. Okay, so we'll find mother. We'll go to our custom data, and inside of our commands, we're just going to get rid of these guys. And let's first, we'll define dock. So what happens when we dock? Well, we know that we want our lights to turn off, so we will go block off, and we're going to call it lights. And we also want to turn our thrusters off, so we're going to go um, block off thrusters. Okay, and when we undock, well, it would be the inverse, right? So we are going to turn our lights on. 
block on lights. And in fact, if we really want to cheat, we can just use the text up here, block on thrusters. Okay, we'll give colons for consistency. We're going to hit OK. And then we are going to recompile mother. And without any issue, we should expect this to work. So we see that our lights are on. We're going to hit P. And we notice our lights turn off. And in fact, our thrusters... Um, well, let's take a look. And our thrusters are off. Okay, when we press P and undock, we'll notice our lights come on and our thrusters are back on so we are flying and so there we go that in a very simple implementation is a complete removal of event blocks and timer blocks to make this ship function we'll park them his thrusters will go down his lights will turn off so that is the basics of the kind of undocking and docking procedure let's also look at my landing gear because this is a unique one let's take off we're going to back up a bit and we're going to see how the landing gear works so right now I have it connected to a piston system. So I got two pistons on the back connected to magnetic plates. Okay, now there's some nuances I want to address here. The first thing is we do not want auto lock to be on while our pistons are retracted. And that's really because those plates will connect with the side of the ship and it'll force it into a rotation with some phantom forces. So I don't want that. You'll also notice that when I descend the plates will go to a ready to lock state, but they won't lock automatically. And of course, when I'm in a descent, I kind of just want the gear to lock when it becomes lockable. Uh, ultimately, I don't really want to think about that problem. Um, it should just do it automatically for me. So let's think about how we could do that with some automation, right? So let's go to mother and let's define some more commands, right? So this one is going to be extend gear and then the other one will be retract gear. Okay. So how does the extend gear work? Well, we definitely want to set our piston distance to maximum. Now in a small grid, the maximum distance is two meters. So we're just going to say that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for one second. Uh, let's make it two seconds. And then what we're going to do is we are going to turn the auto locking of the gear on. And that is to say, after two seconds, the gear will be able to lock itself. It'll be far enough away from the, 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 the hull of our ship that we don't expect it to lock to it. And quite similarly, right, um, when we retract our gear, we are going to bring our piston to zero. We can set our gear lock or our gear auto to false immediately. And we probably also want to, before we even retract our gear, we want to actually unlock uh, our gear. So gear unlock. Um, I think they're just called plates, but let's confirm. Uh, mag plates landing gear. Okay, we'll call them that. It's a bit verbose, but uh, close enough. Okay, so in fact, we have to add that here as well. So the gear auto on those plates becomes true. The gear unlock is for those guys. And of course, same with the auto command. So we want to make sure that we're targeting those guys correctly and getting our punctuation correct. We'll do a quick scan. Everything looks okay. All right, so now I should be able to call extend gear and retract gear. And those should... In the case of extend gear, extend my plates and allow them to be locked when they contact something lockable. And when I retract them, I want to unlock them. I want to actually, we'll do it in a different order. I'll make sure that the auto lock is off and then I will retract those pistons. Okay, so we can just assign these to buttons now. So like we had before, I'm going to do a different menu just to prove this point. Uh, we'll go to the third menu. So we'll find our mother. And our first command is going to be um, extend gear. Uh, I'm just going to call this gear down. And our second one will be retract gear. And this is going to be gear up. OK, so we'll go to mother real quick. We'll hit a recompile and let's try it. So gear up. Didn't work. 
Invalid command, piston distance. Ah, because we didn't target a piston. Of course, classic. So let's find the name of our pistons here. Pistons landing gear, sure. Yeah, right here. There we go. Okay, and we'll go gear down. And we should be able to... Ah, okay, so we're going to want to adjust the extension. But we notice they auto-locked, and we go gear up. They unlock, and they fully retract. So I think we probably want to adjust our extension a little bit. So let's go back to our custom data for our, our extend and let's just make it one meter we'll see what that does so we'll do a recompile let's do a gear down yeah that seems reasonable right there we go and we're locked now we can hit p to unlock no we can't but if we hit gear up uh, it'll automatically unlock so there we go. So we have a fully automated speeder now, and it is only using a Mother OS programmable block. Not too bad. Okay, guys, that is it for the Spiff retrofit. So that was nice and nice, quick and dirty. We covered the connector disconnect and connecting. We covered a situation where we're occupying the cockpit. And we also covered that a unique use case where we actually extend our landing gear in a situation where we aren't docking. Uh, so now we don't have any timer blocks or event blocks on the Spiff. Uh, and he is available uh, to do any other additional automations that we want to do down the road with Mother. So thanks for tuning in. And I will make sure that this guy makes it into the workshop so you guys can download it and play with it yourselves. Happy engineering.